Hi everyone, it's Sandy, and in today's video I will be sharing with you all my thoughts on the books that I read in December. Definitely watch till the end of the video or just skip to the end because I will be doing a little giveaway. Before I actually get into my December wrap-up, I do want to talk about one book that I read at the very end of November, and I didn't get a chance to talk about it in my November wrap-up because I did film my November wrap-up a few days early, but the book that I finished was Sadie by Courtney Summers. I actually listened to this as an audiobook. This book centers around a girl named Sadie whose younger sister Maddie was actually killed. Sadie leaves behind her entire life and is determined to bring her sister's killer to justice, so she goes on a road trip to go find the killer. It's told in Sadie's point of view, but we also have a podcast that's covering Sadie's disappearance. So I thought that the way the story was told was fantastic, and I really love the audiobook format. The audiobook does have a full cast of characters, and it was done so well. The full cast of narrators definitely made the story a lot more engaging and very immersive. I did end up giving the book a 4 out of 5 stars, mostly because of the ending. The ending of this book didn't really have the closure that I was looking for, and so because of that, I wasn't really satisfied. I still wanted to know more. I did kind of go into this book thinking it was like a mystery, but it's definitely not. I did read Trina from Between Chapters Review on this book on Goodreads, and she describes this book as a revenge mission, and I think that's a perfect descriptor of what this book is about. So definitely don't go into this book thinking it's a mystery because it's not, and I was a little bit disappointed while listening to this book when I realized that this isn't a mystery. So like I mentioned, I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. In December, the first couple things that I picked up were actually novellas, and I'm going to talk all about them at the same time. They are the 6th, 7th, and 8th novella in Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare and a few other authors. I wasn't intending to read any of the novellas before Queen of Air and Darkness release, but my pair Bataille Trin from Transformers was recommended by Emma to read the 6th, 7th, and 8th book before the final book in the Dark Artifices come out because it had a lot of important information, and I'm really glad that I did read those novellas prior to Queen of Air and Darkness. The sixth novella, The Wicked Ones, follows Celine Montclair. I'm not going to go into details about who she is because it is kind of a spoiler. The seventh novella, The Land I Lost, mostly focuses on Alec. We also get to see Lily Chen, who's in the New York Vampire Clan. I really love seeing her character and getting to know a little bit more about her. It's so great being able to see characters from the Mortal Instruments as adults now and in leadership positions. I know that Alec is going to be a great leader, and I love seeing his interactions with this Shadowhunter child. And the eighth novella is called Through Blood Through Fire, and this focuses on Jem and Tessa. The storyline in this particular novella I didn't really care for, but because it's Jem and Tessa, I still really enjoyed it. Something is revealed in this novella that made my heart so happy. So speaking of Shadowhunters, I obviously read Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare in December. This is the third and final book in The Dark Artifices. I don't even know how to explain The Dark Artifices without spoiling other Shadowhunters series, but the series take place five years after the end of the Mortal Instruments, and it centers around the Blackthorn family, and the main overarching storyline is that there are two Parabatais, Julian Blackthorn and Emma Carstairs. Parabatais are forbidden from falling in love, and surprise, surprise, Emma and Julian have feelings for each other. This book isn't my favorite in The Dark Artifices. I think it is Lord of Shadows, but I still really love this book. I loved all the different point of views that we got, and how all these point of views tie in with one another. I really love that we got to see more of Drew's character, because she is a character that's kind of in the sideline in the previous two books. Emma and Julian are probably my least favorite Shadowhunter couple, but I really love Emma's character individually. I think she's awesome, and I just adore the Blackthorn family. They are definitely one of my favorite fictional families ever. I also have like a 40-minute reading vlog about this book, so if you want to hear more of my thoughts and live reactions to certain things, then definitely check out that reading vlog. I'll link that video down below if you want to check it out. So overall, I think I would give this book a 4.5 out of five stars. The next book that I finished is The Burning Maze by Rick Riordan. This is the third book in the Trials of Apollo series. The first book in the series is called The Hidden Oracle, and this whole series centers around the god Apollo, who was punished by Zeus, and because of this punishment, he has to live as a 16-year-old mortal. I really love Apollo's character. I think he's hilarious, but I loved seeing his character growth throughout these past few books in the series. Apollo can be very selfish and self-absorbed, but seeing the way he has grown throughout these books is incredible. Way that he treats and thinks about demigods is definitely very different from the very beginning of the book. He's immortal now and seeing him team up with other demigods and I love seeing all of the relationships that he's built. Seeing some of the sacrifices that he made really shows how much he has grown throughout the books and I really love seeing that character growth. There is one thing that happened in this book that I really did not think Rick Riordan would do and if you've read this book, you know what I'm talking about because I still can't really believe it. When it happened in the book, I was like, no, this can't happen. No, Rick 
wouldn't do this to us, would he? And the story continued, and then the story ended, and nothing has changed regarding this aspect of the story. And so I think Rick just went there and I really was not expecting that and I don't really know how to feel about it. I really love that we got to see characters from the Heroes of Olympus throughout these books. It's just really nice and kind of nostalgic to see. I've been listening to all these books as audiobooks and I think the narrator does a fantastic job narrating the story. However, there has been a point in the series where I've just am um, kind of confused who the villain is. <laughs> I don't know if I just zoned out. I know that it has to do with some sort of Roman Emperor, but I'm just confused about the whole thing. So there's that, but that's just kind of a me thing. So I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. The next book that I finished is also another audiobook, and that is Only Human by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is the third and final book in the Themis Files. The first book in the trilogy is called Sleeping Giants, and it starts off with this girl named Rose Franklin who is riding her bike, and she falls into this hole. In this hole, it turns out that there is this giant metal hand. And so the story takes place 17 years later. Rose Franklin is now an adult. She's a scientist and she's leading this team to help find the other parts of this giant robot that goes with this giant metal hand that she discovered many years ago. I love these audiobooks because they have a full cast of narrators and that just makes the whole story a lot more fun to listen to. I didn't enjoy this book as much as the previous books. What I think is so interesting about the series is that with each book there's a huge time jump and personally I'm just not a huge fan of time jumps but I definitely understand why the author chose to do that. This book just doesn't feel the same as the other two books. It definitely has a very different tone. Also because some of the characters that I really love are no longer in it, so I'm not as invested in the story as I used to be. This is definitely my least favorite of the three. The plot of this book just wasn't as exciting as the previous two, and so because of all of those reasons, I ended up giving this one a three out of five stars. The next book that I read is Little White Lies by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This book follows our main character Sawyer, who is 18 years old. She's an auto mechanic, one day she is approached by her estranged grandmother who is offering her a six-figure contract if she participates in debutante season. Sawyer needs the money and she also is interested in finding out who her biological father is so she agrees to do it and so because of that she's entered in this world full of scandals and family secrets. I was so excited to go into this book because I love Jennifer Lynn's Barnes other series such as The Naturals which is right over there and The Fixer and unfortunately this book was a disappointment. If you watch my disappointing reads of 2018 I talked about this book and so you know why I didn't really enjoy this book very much. This book is definitely very different from what I've read before. I didn't even know what a debutante was and overall I just didn't care about this whole debutante plotline. There is a little bit of a mystery involved in the book. There's the mystery regarding who Sawyer's biological father is and there's also another mystery regarding a car accident. So the story is actually told in before and after chapters. The after chapters basically take place where these four girls, including Sawyer, are locked up in a cell. And in the before chapters, which take place over the course of eight months, are leading up to why these girls are locked up. And the whole story was just very underwhelming. There are a bunch of different tiny plot lines coming into play, and it just made the story go in so many different directions. And that definitely impacted my enjoyment of the story. With all of these different plot lines coming into play, the story just kind of felt like a mess. I just wasn't a huge fan of the way that the story was formatted. This is actually the first book in a series. I'm not sure how many books are going to be in the series but I definitely do plan on continuing on with the series because I do want to know what happens. I ended up rating this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I finished is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. This story is Vikings inspired and it follows our main character Elin who is a warrior and the story begins on a battlefield. Elin is fighting and eventually she encounters her brother who she believed had died five years ago and not only is he alive but he's fighting on the enemy's side. Elin is eventually captured by the enemy and is forced to live in the household that her brother currently lives in. The story had such a strong start and I was really looking forward to seeing where the story went but once Elin was captured the story just kind of went downhill. There's a development of a romantic relationship with Elin and this other character named Fisk and when the story wasn't focused on this romantic relationship that I honestly didn't care about it's spent in lots of boring conversations and household chores with other characters and nothing really happened in the story other than the very beginning and the very end. The whole middle chunk of the story just wasn't interesting to read about. Overall I ended up reading this book a 3 out of 5 stars. And the very last book that I read in December is Dumplin by Julie Murphy. This is also a book that I'm going to be doing a giveaway for. I will be doing a giveaway through Rafflecopter so definitely check out the link in the description below. Unfortunately this is US only. I'm sorry to any international viewers who would like to enter the giveaway but I'll definitely have more giveaways in the future. So the giveaway will include a paperback movie tie-in edition of Dumplin. Dumplin follows a fat main character named Willow Dean and she has a crush on this former jock named Bo. They work together at a restaurant and during the summer they begin this secret relationship. Willow Dean is also the 
daughter of a former beauty queen, and so unexpectedly, Willow Dean actually ends up entering the beauty pageant that her mom is running. This is a book that I've known about for years, and I've always been interested in reading it, but I never got around to doing it until now. Especially with the Netflix movie that came out earlier in December, I knew that I had to pick it up. I really enjoyed this book, and I flew through it pretty quickly. I like Julie Murphy's writing style. It's very easy to get into. Although I really like Bo's character, I definitely feel that there's a lack of development between his relationship with Willow Dean. I was honestly shocked when they first kissed because I really wasn't expecting for it to happen so quickly. And then all of a sudden they're in this secret relationship and they're making out all the time. And I just never really understood why Willow Dean liked him and why he liked her. Even though I felt like there was a lack of development in their relationship, I still really enjoyed seeing them together. I really like seeing all the little things that Bo would do, such as putting a red lollipop in her locker. I think that's just so cute. It's also a bit of a love triangle in this book that I didn't feel was very necessary. I really like the other guy, Mitch, and he was really kind and caring, but it was so clear that Willow Dean didn't reciprocate the same feelings that he had for her, and I feel like she kind of led him on at certain parts in the book, even though she knew she was doing it and that she shouldn't be doing it. I also really love the friendships that were formed in this book. It was really heartwarming to see these group of girls come together with this beauty pageant and seeing how all of that played out. I really loved how drag was involved in this book and seeing how elements of that played out in the beauty pageant. I think it is very empowering to see girls who society deem as not beautiful enough or good enough enter a beauty pageant. I think that definitely takes a lot of gut, courage, and confidence. I did get the chance to watch the Netflix movie after finishing this book and seeing these group of girls killing it in the beauty pageant just made me so happy. The ending of this book definitely felt a bit abrupt and I really would have liked a bit more closure. I would have liked to see a couple more pages of Willow Dean and Bo together, but overall I did enjoy this book and I would give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Those are all the books that I read in December. If you've read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!